have like a real burning question, I could take them. Uh, uh, I might walk around a little bit too, just because I. Uh, it's been a busy day already. It's uh, good to be here, and good to be here with uh, now past president uh, Greg Borboom. And want to uh, thank Greg uh, for his year as a uh, president of the pork producers. I, I'm a real believer. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, I worked for Farmers Union for uh, 17 years before I became commissioner, and I worked at the Capitol in St. Paul and in Washington D.C. And I really. Uh, believe in what uh, ag organizations do for our farmers because I've seen it uh, every day, including the, uh, the pork producers. And so uh, the work that uh, Dave Preisler does uh, in meeting with him, but then Greg is president. Greg had me and, and uh, many of my staff out to his farm in his grain operation this, uh, uh, was it the summer? It was, uh, yep, and uh, uh, it seems like a long time ago, but it's very helpful. You know, I've been on many hog farms, but I try to get out and, and see a lot of things. Uh, Greg also went to uh, Columbia with us, along with uh, Jody on uh, my first trade a mission, and Kevin Paps in the back, too. Kevin went uh, with us to Columbia and Peru. Um, and really interesting to learn and see uh, in that, but it was really, uh, I couldn't believe how busy we were. And um, we have a group coming from Columbia next week that we uh, uh, had met or different things, a couple of governors from uh, Columbia. And so I'll talk more about that in a minute, but I want to thank Greg for his uh, year. So I am always not sure. This is the third uh, presentation I've done today, and uh, I, I hope they're not mixed up. He said, I hope this isn't the PETA uh, one that I gave earlier. No, so <laughs> I, I don't have a PETA slide, but... Uh, uh, but I, I do a lot of different, uh, you know, presentations and talking about agriculture, and it has been a real uh, pleasure to serve as commissioner. And uh, for a year, uh, it's a little bit over a year now. I wasn't sure I was going to make it when we get to the end of the year because uh, it was really an uh, interesting year. So I'll just go through a few things. Uh, I've got quite a few slides, but I'll go through them pretty quickly. Um, I don't have to tell all the people in the room this. The one interesting thing on there is that we have uh, 68,500 farms in Minnesota. That's down from the uh, five-year census to 70, from 73,000. So in the last five years, we've lost about 5,000 farms. And there's a lot of uh, different reasons for that. Remember, the caveat for being a farm in Minnesota is having $1,000 worth of income a year. So. Uh, there's a lot of uh, ebbs and flows, and you know what that is. But in general, we want to see that number go up, not down. And so we work on that. But it did go down. Just for context, in Minnesota, there's 5.7 million people now. When I started with Farmers Union, I always had this speech, and we were closer into the 80,000s, and we had 5.1 million people. So we see our population growing and our farms uh, shrinking. Um, but we still have a lot of farms and a lot of uh, agriculture um, you know, and those 68,500 farms support anywhere between 25 and 30 percent of the GDP in Minnesota really drives our economy. And you're pretty up, much all familiar with a lot of our rankings. Uh, Minnesota is, uh, I, I say, that we're uh, always in the top in a lot of our agriculture production. Of course, we're uh, uh, very proud of our things that we're very much in the top in, turkeys, and they, I, they fight with me. I just had turkeys, but they have turkeys raised. And uh, there's different, like turkeys processed and sugar beets, rye. Um, there's others. Those move around uh, quite a bit, whether it's uh, sweet corn, hogs. Hogs, we go two and three. But, um, you know, uh, very, very high up in a lot of our uh, important commodities, especially if we're talking hogs here today. Uh, pork production. Uh, and uh, you can see this, uh, um, uh, just the bottom one is what I want to highlight. We're one of the fastest growing hog production states in the United States, in US, uh, achieving a 47% increase in hog marketing from 2000 to 2018. I think that's uh, interesting as we look at the overall sector. Uh, 2019, as we we're just talking about the challenges. This is a slide I, I've used for a while because I, I think the first annual meeting or thing I did was about uh, November, and I just said to our communication staff, I said that as a commissioner, it really um, got to me that every day I have bad things that happen and good things that happen. So all my meetings are 
they're good and bad. But instead of saying good and bad, I changed into challenges and opportunities. And so every day my meetings that I have, they're challenges. Some plants closing, farmers are going out of business. But at the same time, my very next meeting will be with a company that wants to come into Minnesota and expand or has this new product they want to do or a farmer has this great idea they want to do. And so I really boil down to me that every day is a challenge and an opportunity. And I don't have to go through all of these with you, but, you know, so I asked them, I said, so I'll have a challenge slide or opportunity slide like this uh, at the end that we need to put more things in. But I said, just pull some of the things that are challenges for this year. I said, it shouldn't be hard. And they said, oh, yeah, it'll be hard. And then when they did it, they are like, oh, it wasn't that hard. So that's unfortunate. But a lot of these you recognize, you know, uh, the first thing that happened was the, uh, the barns collapsing uh, in the spring. At first it was dairy farms, uh, dairy barns. We had 20 some collapse in southern Minnesota one weekend, that heavy snow. Um, then as the, as the week went on, we had another big snow right on top of that. Then we also started to lose hog and turkey barns. So we lost 300 uh, plus barns that, that we know of. Um, that, but the good news was they kind of came down. We didn't lose a lot of livestock in them. I do want to highlight though that you know, out of that, the legislature reacted really quickly, and we do have our rural finance authority within the department. We changed some things up so that you could get a zero interest loan if your barn collapsed uh, to rebuild your barn. And uh, so that's still open uh, if you know anybody that has that. And we do have quite a few farmers that have used that zero interest loan, and uh, that was really helpful. So uh, sugar beets, potatoes, you've heard all that. Um, you know, the Del Monte plant. Um, the uh, other big thing I just mentioned that isn't on this slide because it didn't happen until after they had made it was about December. We also found out officially that 2019 was the wettest year on record. And so that uh, just complicated everything as well. <clears throat> um, more on the 2019 challenges. Uh, Record precipitation, some areas with 50% above normal. Again, I don't have to uh, mention that all to you. Late planting, late harvest, lower yields. One point, you know, uh, almost 1.2 million acres in preventive plant. Um, more challenges. Uh, um, you know, in 2019, 2018, we came out. We'll get the figures here pretty soon, but the net farm income on the first bullet point, 26,000. Uh, was the lowest that we had had in the past 23 years. And so this uh, continued to just kind of compound. We know farmers have eaten into their equity. Um, and, uh, you know, for the state of Minnesota, it's much uh, like the rest of the Midwest. Those are all things that were definitely a challenge. So uh, I'm not going to spend a ton of time on that. I think, again, most of you know a lot of this that uh, are un unfortunate, but... Uh, um, this is our mission at the Department of Agriculture. It's really simple. It's one that they've had for a long time. It's kind of what I go by every day. We just want to help improve the quality of your life. It's as simple as that. Whatever we can do to uh, work on that. But we also have to maintain a safe food supply. A lot of what we do every day is review uh, issues that have to do with safety of food. And a lot of it comes down as commissioner, um, whether it's a product going out or we're inspecting a uh, uh, meat uh, plant or uh, a product that's come out of it, is somebody going to get sick and how sick are they going to get? Um, these are things that are really important because they really also impact our, uh, our products that we sell, the environment, um, and of course the strength of our ag economy. Um, a big issue for this group, and I really want to thank the pork producers for uh, their leadership on this, is emergency preparedness. Um, you know, uh, dealing with uh, <clears throat> AFS uh, is a big uh, issue. The legislature has provided $900,000 to support our work to not just us, but also to the Board of Animal Health. Um, we have a very good relationship with the Board of Animal Health and Dr. Thompson. Um, I really feel that uh, we do a lot of work preparing for African swine fever. Um, again, I don't feel like I need to go over how important it is, but we have an incident management team that's made up of uh, 
uh, MDA and the Board of Health staff. We've done multiple ASF exercises with industry and state and federal partners. I also want, you know, want to thank some of the farms that have come out, have come into our, uh, our bigger uh, exercises that we've had. We've actually, unfortunately, in Minnesota, have had a lot of experience dealing with things. I remember about years ago we had bovine tuberculosis uh, hit in northern Minnesota. We had to set up zones. We had to do indemnities and pay out. Uh, and we were able to eradicate that um, and move forward. And those farms are repopulated and done well. We had Af uh, avian influenza, a very big outbreak of that. We had uh, um, the same pro uh, protocol that we went through. So as we prepare for this, that's uh, been helpful. But also we've had several hog farms that have brought in um, their records and we've gone through the drills. So, you know, we'd say that, um, you know, we found African swine fever. The types of dr uh, drills that we do will be like um, it's found in North America. So that's be the first thing, Mexico or Canada, what happens immediately in Minnesota. Um, we set up the quarantine zones, um, who gets notified, uh, what happens then if it gets found in California or Iowa or Watanwan County, what happens if it gets uh, found on a farrow to finish, what happens if it gets uh, found on a 4-H uh, uh, um, uh, breeding farm that's sending pigs out to a lot of different counties or a locker plant or uh, you know, all these different scenarios that we think through and that we're prepared to do. I also did um, one thing I did this year too, and Dave and Greg and uh, Hormel, uh, we had different people come in. We did a briefing for the governor as well on AFS. Uh, increased uh, rural counseling services is another big piece that I uh, just want to bring up as well as very important this last year, the legislature provided us with another uh, mental health specialist. Uh, and again, these are free uh, programs for farmers. So we have a free mental health counselor that you can call, or if you know somebody who's struggling, we've, uh, you know, we've had a tough time the last couple of years. We've had people that have had uh, issues and it is helpful to have uh, not just one now, but two different people that we can call and, and uh, if uh, you know somebody that, that needs help or assistance, we also have our farm advocate program. We have a um, total of 10 advisors. Um, I'm, I'm a believer in the advocate program. If you know farmers, again, who are having troubles, um, that uh, a, a advocate a lot of times can work through those issues. They can kind of buy some time uh, with the lender. They can get you into mediation. They can work with your bank. Um, unfortunately, I uh, used the advocate yesterday um, we had a, a cattle farm where um, uh, we discovered that they probably hadn't been feeding the animals uh, and the animals were in distress and uh, we had the advocate work with that to get those animals so it didn't become a big news story and we kind of can able to work that out and find homes for those uh, but also uh, get some feed to the ones that uh, needed it as well. So. The advocates are very helpful um, in uh, things like that. I also want to highlight our agricultural water quality certification program. You know, one of the things that, you know, it used to bug me before I was commissioner, it really bugs me as the commissioner, is uh, people that aren't farmers or from the outside look in say farmers don't do enough environmentally. We don't, uh, um, they, you know, the criticize, uh, criticism we get this is a program that we have that we've started that we encourage people to look at. May not be for everybody, but it's really growing. Um, it uh, recognizes farmers for practices that they do, provides them 10 years of certainty from regular, regular changes, uh, our regulatory changes uh, at the state level. It's a partnership with uh, the NRCS and uh, Troy uh, Daniel here, our state conservationist here has been really helpful, our Bowser. Um, but if you look at this program, we're up to 826 producers um, and almost 565,000 acres. We're really, um, really growing. I think we have about 300 plus farmers that are in the process too of certifying um, and uh, really growing. This is my neighbor, John Stevens. Um, we had um, the uh, 500,000 acre signing um, at, his, at his farm in the summer. And we've already added 65,000 acres since then, which is exciting. But John, um, 
uh, kind of an interesting guy. He started uh, uh, about <clears throat> uh, adding cover crops into his mix uh, a few years ago. He started, uh, you can see, uh, um, he started not farming through everything and put in uh, um, strips there and, and uh, really improved his farm. And, uh, you know, just really proud of everything John's done, and he's become a real thought leader in our area. I, I would say like five years ago, uh, people might, and he, I say this about him, but people would say he was a little kooky, uh, you know, and now uh, it's kind of fun to see people are saying, oh, interesting what he's doing and the thoughts he's doing. The best story he told is that when we were standing there, right, right up here on the ridge there, he told a story to the governor. He said, governor, he said, uh, his dad was there with him, that's his dad. And he said, dad, you remember five years ago, we stood up there on that ridge and we, we said, we gotta do something different on our farmland and we gotta try to change some of our practices. And he said, that's where we decided we were gonna do and make some of these changes. And he said, you know, I, I, who would have thought dad, five years later, we'd be standing in the field with the governor uh, talking about what we're doing. And so really interesting, I encourage you to check it out and we're uh, excited to see uh, what's going on here. Other big opportunities, obviously in the news quite a bit, our trade. Um, uh, pork, as it says here, is the fastest growing uh, export commodity from 2000 to 2018 in Minnesota. So 450% uh, increase. And really kudos to uh, uh, your, um, your, your council and, and that uh, everything that they do uh, to help with that. I can tell you that we host groups a lot from uh, other countries and the different things that we do that our uh, uh, pork is, uh, it's a top priority, but you know, not a surprise, you know all this, uh, Japan, Mexico, China, China, you know, another issue, but hopefully going into this year, it's good news, right? We have our China market and all the issues we have there, but at least we're moving forward. Same with USMCA. Maybe not a magic bullet, but um, you know, hopefully uh, we're moving forward, and uh, you know, it's it's uh, providing some steady uh, um, uh, news for us. USMCA. Not spend a lot of time on this. I'll just say, as as commissioner too, um, you know, I, I've really worked to uh, build relationships with our both our Canadian and Mexican uh, counterparts. Uh, we host them a lot at the department. I've been to uh, Winnipeg, um, and uh, in fact, I got up at 7.30 and came here and met with Greg and some of the other leaders with the Manitoba Pork um, and work a lot with the consulate here on different issues. Um, and so we're hopeful to continue to move that and build that relationship. One other thing I'd mention uh, with this, um, both at our NASDA, which is our State Departments of Agriculture, and our Trinational Accord, which is a meeting we had in Manitoba um, about a month ago, which is all the egg commissioners from the United States, Man uh, Canada, and Mexico, uh, we meet. And then I led the discussion and our agreements of, uh, Af on African swine fever at both that and our NASDA. Um, and basically, a lot of that, we talk about how we would uh, move um, uh, uh, hogs and continue to promote and work together, which is important. Um, and then the China agreement, obviously really important uh, as we move forward. Um, uh, China's, you know, I'm sure that most of you have read this. I know you're very interested in that. Uh, and it, this is all, you know, going to with what China's all dealing with, with their own problems with African swine fever, but agreeing to broaden the list of pork products is always helpful. So, you know, we're very hopeful that this is all going to, uh, be helpful and uh, move us forward. It's good news to start the year after. Again, I think we're getting into our opportunities. Oh yeah, it even says that on the top. I, we uh, changed it around some, so. Uh, financing pro uh, pro programs, we always like to highlight within the Department of Agriculture. Um, we have our value added grants that help add value to ag products. Our, uh, we do feasibility studies. Um, meat processing, and again, these would be for like equal to plants or custom slaughter. We know is a big issue in Minnesota um, that uh, 22 of the 52 uh, grants that we awarded were to uh, meat processors. A lot of the um, uh, pork that goes uh, to our equal to plants in the state, uh, farmers will tell us that they have anywhere from three to nine months uh, scheduling time 
uh, out to uh, get that. And so we're working on that, and uh, that's one of the big issues that I hope to continue to work on because we see the need there. Um, we're going to do a million dollars in uh, fiscal year 2020 and money that the legislature gave us. We also are doing uh, uh, $5 million uh, in 2021 for the soybean processing and research up in northwest Minnesota, where we don't have as much pork processing, but we're going to be crushing uh, soybeans hopefully up there. Um, that's a, a long-term project that's just getting off the ground now. But it's important if we are going to build our livestock uh, business up into northern Minnesota or northwestern Minnesota, I'd say. Um, we also held a uh, emerging farmers uh, listing sessions where um, we're really looking to um, uh, really build and, and bring in and grow that 68,000. This was something the legislature wanted us to look at. It's a priority for us to build and bring in all kinds of different farmers, including we have a lot of interest from our immigrant farmers, our uh, mung growers, um, and uh, so this is a top priority. We just finished that. We have a report that's just coming out on February 1st. <clears throat> Here's uh, more of the opportunities that we have that uh, we put in here. The one that I want to make sure is on here that I just wanted to mention, because it's one that I want to really continue to talk with the uh, pork producers about and the association about is uh, uh, Cargill invests uh, 75 million into the purest plant in Dawson. Does everybody know what that is? So, the, uh, uh, so they're building a pea protein plant uh, in Dawson. And uh, so protein, a big issue and how we look at it, but the new plant proteins are getting a lot of um, uh, traction, you know, and, and you've seen the um, uh, protein, I, don't, I, I hate to call them protein, uh, whatever we want to call them. But for me as commissioner and being a, a good beef backer or a pork producer or a pork supporter, uh, it is interesting to navigate that as uh, see um, that is a growing issue. One of the things that we do um, at the Department of Agriculture is we regulate grocery stores. And um, as I tour grocery stores in the metro areas, um, in the suburban areas, the fastest growing sections of their uh, grocery stores are the edges, but specifically the deli. So they'll say a deli is the fastest growing. Every grocery store I go to, they want to, uh, people want a prepared food. They want to go in and get something and, and get out. The next fastest growing thing is uh, the, um, the plant-based uh, burgers or plant-based meat, or I can't call it meat, but whatever we're going to call it. Um, and so uh, uh, deciding that is Puris is, uh, is uh, building a plant in Dawson, and they're going to be contracting with farmers to grow pea, uh, green peas. Um, and so that's kind of interesting. There'll be a byproduct for cattle of that, which I thought is kind of interesting. But just to show you that we're, uh, you know, uh, interesting. One of the other things I thought was a great story was this one in the middle. Um, the dairy farmers uh, excited to be milking again after his collapsed barn because we had, uh, you know, one of the things that really got to the governor on one of those barns was that uh, that the the farm they said that after their barn collapsed they had to move all their cows out and they said that was the first time in 114 years a cow hadn't been milked on that farm and uh, but they had no choice and so that's a, a good thing to see as well so um, but other things too like we're improving our pollinator uh, protections I think again a lot gets asked about. Um, what, uh, what are farmers doing? We talked about water quality some, but pollinators also are a big issue. And as I uh, travel around and I get to see a lot of the different things uh, farmers are doing to uh, also increase uh, pollinator uh, parts uh, there as well too. And you also saw the uh, 9 million that we got for our uh, received uh, for our water uh, quality certification program. It's very important for our state. Uh, so with that, I just want to say uh, thank you. I want to, um, you know, a few other comments I just want to make that I, uh, that's my uh, email and my phone number uh, there on the, uh, on, on, I try to always put that out there. I try to get out and visit. I've traveled uh, most of the state my first year as commissioner to try to get out and visit and see. Um, I do enjoy working with the governor. Um, he 
uh, is somebody that um, he cares a lot about agriculture. He's very interested in agriculture. Um, but I, uh, the time I get with him a lot of times is limited. There's other agencies, as you can imagine, that have bigger issues sometimes in agriculture. And, uh, but, you know, um, if there's things that um, are helpful, uh, feel free to contact me anytime. I, again, just want to thank the pork producers as well for their help this year, especially on the African swine fever. I know Dave Preisler has made countless trips to our department to uh, go through and look at all the different uh, uh, pieces that we have. So with that, I'm glad to take any uh, questions or comments about this or anything I said or anything I didn't have on here. So uh, glad, to, glad to do that. If anybody has any, yeah, so. <laughs> Yep, go ahead. Yes. What's your favorite pork meal? Ah, yeah. Well, that's uh no, that's uh definitely uh definitely bacon. So, a uh the uh you know, and and I I think that uh however uh we can promote our uh pork uh industry in Minnesota, I try to like work that into our department when we have different meals or highlight our Minnesota companies and uh uh, different uh, pieces like that, but uh, definitely uh, very supportive of bacon. So, yes. <laughs> Any other questions or comments? Yeah. Uh, maybe I missed it. I came in a bit late. Sorry. But my question is, uh, what's your comfort level of communication with the other state agencies that are heavily impacting mm -hmm. us in agriculture? MPCA and then nationally, uh, DNR and, and the CS and so on. Uh, my question again is, is yeah. a pretty good comfort level in <laughs> Well, uh, yeah, that, uh, no, uh, I, I'll, you know, it's, um, I, I really enjoy working with the other commissioners. Um, I, you know, I, I'll be honest with you that I probably 50% of the questions that I get on a daily basis have nothing to do with my work at the Department of Agriculture. They have to do with uh, the Pollution Control Agency or things that they're doing, the DNR, uh, and a lot of, and this year especially, with all the water that we have everywhere, uh, you know, we're, our water tables are high across the board. Um, and then finally, our Department of Revenue. You know, I, before, when I was with Farmers Union, I really, um, you know, my first year or two lobbying, I spent most of my time in the Ag Committee. I, uh, but after a couple of years, I realized that what we can really do for you is in the Tax Committee, you know, and so, um, A.J. Dewar, who is the pork producers lobbyist, he spends a lot of time in the tax committee, you know, and so, you know, whether working on the school credit we got or uh, we've been trying to work on this, the 179 issue, I've had that for years. I've been, you know, we have this very low threshold and we had an opportunity the last couple of years to do something about it and take a bite out of it. And it's a huge chunk and we weren't able to. So that, that's an excellent question because that as commissioner is one of my priorities is to try to be an advocate within those other agencies to say, you know, hey, what can you do uh, here or there and try to bring the farm side to that. Uh, we also have uh, within the governor's office, how some of you may or may not know, we have an advisor in the governor's office. His name's uh, Emmett Hadeen, and doesn't matter one way or another necessarily to your own, but just so you know, we have somebody there who helps coordinate. And by the way, he was here last night at the uh, uh, Taste of Elegance um, and visiting, so that's good that he came over and visited. But, you know, in my, in my case, sometimes it's not always comfortable. You know, and I think as Ag Commissioner, a lot of times it's for me to go to the DNR commissioner or the PCA commissioner and say, hey, I don't think this is gonna work out so good for farmers, you know, and, and uh, you, know, um, the, uh, you know, that kind of take this approach, because I, I live out there too, I see it every day, and sometimes I think there's a disconnect, uh, and so I think that as commissioner of ag, I am trying to be, you know, um, insert myself, you know, with their age, those agencies to try to, um, um, not always successful, you know, but I think that that's one thing I want to promise to you. And they're very receptive, you know, when I uh, try to talk or 
uh, uh, say that I, I'd like you to look at this or see that as well. But revenue is the other place where I just feel, and I really enjoy working with the Revenue Commissioner, Cynthia Bowerly, because I think that there's a lot of uh, pieces there. So excellent question. Yep. Anything else? Last chance. Otherwise, I'll be here for a while, and like I said, there's my uh, name and phone number, so if you think of something uh, later or anytime, uh, I'm always glad to uh, take those questions. So thanks for having me today. Appreciate it.